Hey everyone, this video is going to be a little different than my previous tutorials I have done. The template will still be available at armortemplates.com and I'm still going to show you the entire process but instead of narrating each step I'm going to go into the inspiration for this design and at the same time go over something that I truly believe to be critically important in our society. I'm sure when you hear a sentence like that the first thing you think of is something political but this is not political at all. This is a serious issue that no news outlets have covered, and it's likely they will never cover it. It's not an exciting problem. It's not a problem one side can blame on the other. It's not a problem that they can make money on. So they'll stick to the type of news that keeps us all fighting and arguing with each other in a constant, ever-increasing state of outrage. That's what they focus on because it gets results. But... As repulsive as that is, this isn't the problem I'm here to discuss with you. I completed my first book in 2006. I shopped it to agents and publishers for two full years and got rejected nearly a hundred times. But the responses I got back were pretty much all the same. They would tell me that it was beautifully written, but fantasy just won't sell. This was in an era before Game of Thrones, Clash of the Titans remakes, 300, and the wildly successful Marvel Cinematic Universe. Eventually, I decided to publish independently and was finally able to get my story out to readers. The book is called Mighty Hammer Down. The main character is named Ramus. Like many writers, I based the protagonist on the person I knew best, myself. Ramus is a slightly depressed, lost individual who is just drifting through life without any real purpose. He wasn't very well liked, with very few friends. He thought no one understood him, and although he was right, he tended to focus inward on himself rather than outward towards the problem. Throughout the story, he begins to grow and understand himself on a deeper level. It was not until I finished the book, literally typing the last page, that I finally discovered a purpose within myself. Ramos stood there in his fantasy world, staring at the setting sun, discovering the reason for his existence. I will read a few lines from the story. Elena hooks some unruly hair behind an ear. What about you, Ramos? Now that you have found that the light at your horizon was nothing but an empty trick that the gods played on you, what will you do? He looked out at the glorious sunset over the ruins of the city of Bryn the orange flames of clouds burning his eyes as the ocean seemed to extinguish the sun at the horizon. I have a light to follow now. I have something that drives me, something that gives me purpose. Now, I'm not going to tell you what his purpose is. For that, you'll have to read the book. But what is far more important is that at the exact moment that my character had this monumental epiphany, I had an equally earth-shattering one of my own. Mine was far different from his, but still just as important. I knew that it was my calling to reach people and show them the truth, to inspire them to understand. The years went by and several books followed. At first I was amazed at the number of books I sold and the fan mail I would receive nearly every day. I was so happy that I was able to reach people and bring them joy. But in time this began to fade. Book sales weren't as good anymore and to be honest I can't even get people to listen to me in person. I will get interrupted literally in the middle of my sentences. Perhaps it's just the way people act here on the East Coast. Or perhaps people just aren't interested in what I have to say. That thought began to weigh on me and eventually I lost focus on writing in general. Luckily, I had made a short video commonly called a book trailer along the way. If you've been a fan of the channel for some time, you're definitely familiar with my version 1 gauntlet. That silly name is for YouTube but fans of my writing know it as Song's Gauntlet. Song is the nickname for another pivotal character in the series named Eratus Redoria. Since I needed some armor for that video, I created it myself. It was the very first time I had ever tried to create anything in metal at all. I consider myself extremely fortunate because for some reason I filmed that entire process and that's how you and I ended up here together today. Without my book series, without the trailer, without the idea to film Song's Gauntlet build, I would never have gotten into armoring. Anyway, after people had seemed to lose interest in the books, I started to feel lost again. I no longer felt this connection to people, nor did I have this feeling of accomplishment in reaching them. 
But over time, I started to realize that I had been going about it all the wrong way. It wasn't that the message I had in the books wasn't important. It was that I had another, more important message that needed to be heard. So now we come to the reason for this video and the inspiration for this piece of armor. I get a whole lot of fan mail now, way more than I ever did for my books. But this fan mail is different. I mostly get people sending me pictures of armor they have built using my templates, along with a heartfelt thanks for bringing them into this hobby. More often than not, people tell me that they had no idea they were capable of doing this stuff until I, they saw my videos and gave it a try. I can't tell you how awesome it is to hear stuff like that. It's literally what keeps me moving forward. But there is another side to this. The vast majority of people who watch my videos are saying things like, I can't do that, or can I just buy it? These kinds of comments sting me. These people are living in a world where they believe they can't do something, even when someone is literally guiding them through every step. That just makes no sense at all to me. Now, I understand a, that a huge percentage of my viewers are here just to watch someone make something cool. I get that. I do it myself. And I'm not directing this to them at all. The people that I'm so confused by are the people that want to do something creative, but feel they can't. So over the years, I began to see a pattern emerging. When I was a kid, we had toys, but it was before what I call the iPad era, where everyone is looking at a screen. Before you say it, I realize the irony of reading words off of my computer screen showing you a video I created on the screen you're looking at, but just hear me out. The toys I played with were G.I. Joe's, Transformers, Thundercats, things like that. My brother and I would set up these elaborate sets for these adventures, and for hours and hours we would entertain ourselves by making up our own stories. I realized that times change, and I'm not opposed to technology. I'm actually all for it. But the problem is, somewhere along the line, we looked at these screens for entertainment, and we stopped making our own stories. Just take a look around you. What have you seen that is genuinely new and inspiring? Look at the movies we have now, Ghostbusters, Godzilla, Transformers, The Lion King, and literally every other Disney movie, Jurassic Park, endless Spider-Man and Batman films. Everything is a reboot or remake these days. Even the Marvel movies that I mentioned earlier are stories that were told decades ago. Television is not much better. There are a few decent shows on with genuine character development, but mostly we have shows that are so poorly written that the actors are the only, literally the only reason to watch it all. Stories make no sense, characters have no reasons for their actions, there's no depth at all. Music is even worse, 90% of modern music is uninspired, repetitive nonsense. All of it is edited with computers to improve it, but really it just makes it worse. Listen to any random song recorded before, say, the year 2000. Even if you don't like the genre of music, it's undeniably more creative and inspired than nearly anything you hear today. I am convinced that this is all because the people writing these songs, shows, and movies were not exposed to what the previous generations were exposed to. They haven't had to come up with anything original. The screens they've been looking at through their entire childhood guided their every move instead of having to navigate the real world on their own. They have no idea how the real world works at all, but somehow they still succeed because their listeners and viewers are unaware in the same exact manner. Creativity is dead. I hate to be standing here at his funeral, but it's the cold, bitter truth. I have spent this whole video complaining about technology killing it, but really, it's all my fault. Well, not me alone, but my generation's fault. We have not done enough to inspire the next generation and promote creativity. But even with creativity dead, there are a few of us still standing in its mighty shadow. We are still here, and it's our duty to bring the light to the world. If you're here with me now, then it's likely that this burden falls to you as well. You'll notice that this piece of armor you have watched me build is rather plain, but that was my intention for this video. In the next video, I will make it beautiful, with decorations that will amaze you. I spent several days trying to come up with a theme for this armor, something like liberty or justice, something important. But what I eventually decided on was the theme of inspiration, and the adornments I add will reflect that. I can't wait to show you guys what it'll look like. See you next time, guys.